Hi, welcome to my blog. Today I'm going to show you how to calculate option prices just using two lines of Python and doing it uh, with a geometric Brownian motion and a Monte Carlo simulation. So um, to do this has some advantages over using Black-Scholes equation and the most important advantage is the fact that while Black-Scholes equation assumes a normal distribution of returns in um, a Monte Carlo simulation such as this, you can basically plug in any distribution that you want. And we know that uh, stock prices are not normally distributed, so uh, that could potentially be a much better way of uh, calculating option prices. Uh, so let's begin. And to start with, we have to import uh, some uh, NumPy um, and get all the toolboxes up and going. So I'll do that here from NumPy import star. Okay, and the first thing we do is we have to um, generate some random numbers. And the random numbers that we use here are normally distributed. And the 252 comes from the fact that uh, the year has 252 trading days. And so we want to have daily returns and the expiry of our option should be one year in the future. And so we'll see here we have a bunch of numbers and um, these numbers are actually normally distributed. So if we wanted to check that, we just increase the number that we have here. For example, then um, we give that a name and then uh, we plot the histogram of that, say with 40 bars. Um, and we see here which something which looks reasonably normally distributed. Okay, so uh, the next thing we have to do with our uh, random numbers is to add some volatility. And let's say we add a volatility of 20%, but 20% volatility means annualized volatility. So we have to down convert it to daily. So we take the square root of the days because volatility scales with the square root of time. And then we do that again. And we will see that the numbers are actually a little bit smaller than before, simply because it's the daily volatility. Okay, so um, what we um, what we have to do next is uh, two things. Uh, we have to produce a geometric random walk. And what a geometric random walk is, I will explain in another talk, or uh, you probably uh, should read it up on Wikipedia. But what it really means is that um, the prices here or the, the data that we have are relative uh, steps. So it's a relative price change from one price to the next rather than an absolute price change in dollars. It's more of a percentage. Okay, so um, we see here that this is effectively a percentage. And um, in order to... Um, get a random walk out of that, uh, we have to do a cumulative product of those. But if we would do that, uh, we would find that this product, because we have all these values close to zero here, will very quickly just go to zero. So what we need to do is add a one to those numbers and then run it again. And if we plot this, we will see that we have something like a, a Brownian motion. And what you notice on this graph is that when the price is lower, we have actually a much smaller um, price changes than when the price is higher. This is a, a property of the uh, geometric Brownian motion. And the other property is that uh, the price will never go below zero. If we would use absolute steps and random numbers, we would find that often uh, we get prices um, that are actually going below zero. And this is not a, way, a good way to model uh, price data. So here is our geometric random walk. Now, the issue with this is we... Um, we use the 252 again 
we don't want just one price series, we want a whole lot. So let's say we want a thousand. In order to do this, we just produce a matrix here of a thousand price series with 252 entries each. And if we wanted to do the cumulative product, we have to tell that function that we want it into the dimension one. And um, let's do that again. And then if we have uh, K, the shape is 1,252. So that is already producing our geometric ground in motion. Um, interesting, let's have a quick look at what that looks like. Um, and I will plot this. So what we should see now is a nice cone that starts and then goes in two directions, as we can see here. So we start at the starting value, 1.0, and then it goes in both directions. Now, one thing we haven't got here yet is the fact that we want a arbitrary starting price. So all we need to do there is we just add our starting price, in our case, 100. Run this again. And then we see in our plot that we end up uh, starting with 100 and then going up to 200, going down to 60. Okay, and so this is already the first line, this line here of our price uh, calculation. So now let's move on to the second line. And what we need for the second line is really just the end prices of our um, of our simulation. So let me show you this again on the graph. All we want is the prices just here on the edge. Okay, and this is really simple. We just look at the prices uh, in this kind of way with a vector, and let's just um, let's just uh, plot the histogram of these prices. So we should get about a thousand of those, and. Um, we can see how the prices are distributed and we see this is a slightly skewed distribution. Um, it goes down to 60 uh, from 100 but it goes all the way up to almost 200 here. Um, so if you want to know why it's simply because the price changes uh, in uh, downward are much smaller uh, than upward because you would for if, if you're if your stock is only worth one dollar, you would not expect the price to fluctuate by three dollars because you would go into the negative. So that's the reason for that. Okay, so we have shown now what this looks like, and now let's um, let's see what else we can do. So the first thing is we need to uh, calculate the difference between the end price and the strike price of our option because when uh, the option is in the money it's worth something when it's out of the money or when it expires out of the money it's worth nothing so if we here we say uh, our strike price is 100 so if this price is negative then it's our option is worthless and if it's positive it's worth something and it's worth the difference between the actual price of of the underlying and the strike price. Hence we get this equation. Now we have to find a expression that shows us that this is actually worth nothing when it goes below the strike price and this is not very difficult to do. We just do the same again. Minus 1, uh, minus 100 is larger than 0. So this expression here will just produce a vector of zeros and ones. When it's larger than zero, it's one. When it's less than zero, it's basically zero. And if we do this, we get a vector which has a lot of zeros and positive numbers. Okay, so we're almost done now. All we have to do is sum this up and get the mean the average of all these values and we end up with 7.72 so that is the price of our option um, now as you can see here 
uh, from this, we only used a thousand values and it's actually not an awful lot. So let's ramp this up a little bit and let's go up to 100,000, uh, which takes a little bit to calculate. But what it means is our price will be far more accurate. Um, so let's wait a little bit and then do our mean again. And we get a price of 7.954. Okay, so is this price correct? Well, uh, let's check with a online options calculator. Let's see if we find one. Um, okay, uh, let's go to Firefox. And let's see. So we go here up. Price and maybe calculator. Okay, and see if we can. Uh, here we go. Options price calculator. And so we have a underlying and a strike price of a hundred days until expiration. We have two five two, but we probably need to use three six five. And we didn't have any interest rate no dividend and a 20% volatility. Let's calculate this. And here we get 7.966. Now compare this to our um, compare this to our uh, calculation 7.954 almost very very accurate calculation and the more we go uh, the more the more we higher go on the numbers, the more accurate it will be. So as a little exercise for you, um, I would recommend perhaps play around with it a little bit. Um, so for example, with this expression, if you reverse the equal uh, larger than sign, um, you can switch between a put or call option. The other thing you can do is uh, you can introduce um, uh, your, your interest rates and in order to do this, you have to put them um, here into this little, um, you have to put them in here. So you have to uh, add an interest rate or multiply an interest rate. And um, obviously you have to make sure that the interest rate, because it's an annual interest rate, has to be daily. So you have to adjust for your daily things. So that's your homework. And I hope you enjoyed this talk and I will see you next time. Bye bye.